All right, so we're going to take a look now at using scientific notation numbers within uh, calculations. So first of all, to review, scientific notation is when you have a number that is either larger or smaller uh, between, um, I should say, either much larger than 10 or smaller than 1. Uh, but what would end up happening is the format is always the same, right? So you have a number between 1 and 10, and it's times 10 to the exponent being a whole number integer that could be positive if you're moving the decimal to the left, or negative if you're moving the decimal to the right. Now, whenever you are putting numbers that are scientific notation into your calculators, this is the most important thing to remember. The value that is in scientific notation should be put in brackets. Okay, and if you're if you're if you have a calculator that does not have brackets, I would highly suggest that you get one that does. Right, so uh, they look like this, something like that. Um, because what's going to end up happening is you have a very high chance for error because you want your calculator to recognize the value. So I'll give you an example. Let's say we had 2.3 times 10 to the negative 2. You would put bracket 2.3 times 10 to the negative 2 and close the bracket. That way your calculator recognizes that this is one number, not a multiplication. Okay, so I'll give you, uh, I'll also let you know how you would put this in. Uh, let's do this. Okay, so first of all, how you would put this in your calculator, you would say 2.3. Now, this is where every calculator is a little bit different. Some calculators actually have a button that looks like this, 10 with a little X at the top. So if you were to press that after this, you would then just simply put negative two. And of course, you would have brackets. So this would say that essentially, the next number afterwards is the exponent. Another way of doing this is if you don't have that, this 10x button, you may have a button that looks like this. Um, it looks essentially, let me just make sure I'm getting it from mine. It looks something like this, x to the y, or sometimes it's y to the x. So what you would do is you would put in uh, 2.3, then you would press this button, you would type in 10, and then the negative two, and then close the bracket. Another way, which I find easier, to be honest, doing a different color, is pretty much any scientific calculator has a button that looks like this. It's like a little half arrow pointing up. So what you would do, how you would write this in your calculator is you would do 2.3 times 10. Then you would press this little half arrow up button and then you would do negative two, of course, with brackets. So this is basically, this little half arrow up is indicating that the number that comes after is what the exponent was on that number 10. Okay, now obviously you're gonna have to practice this a little bit. We'll, we'll go through a few. So try out this first one. This is just an easy one to start. So we're doing addition here. So you would put bracket four times 10 to the six. So remember, you can use the 10X button, you can use this 10 to the Y button, or you can use this um, arrow up. So it would be four times 10 this little arrow, a six, and then close the bracket. So you have some options here. Kind of depends on your calculator. So four times 10 to the six in brackets plus three times 10 to the six, close the bracket. You should get this as your answer. Okay, so give that one a try. All right. Uh, another one looking at multiplication. Let's try this. So remember, you're putting brackets around this in your calculator. 2.77 times 10 to the 5 times, bracket again, 1.1 times 10 to the 2. Close your bracket. 
your answer you get here. So I'll put the full answer here and then we'll do it in scientific notation. So this is the answer that my calculator gave me. So 30,470,000 or some calculators will actually already convert this into scientific notation. So for example, 3.047 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? So if you see this on your calculator or this, right, they're both correct, okay? All right, give this one a try. So here we're doing division. So 2.7 times 10 to the negative 8 in brackets divided by 3.1 times 10 to the negative 4 in brackets. So 2.7, I'll do the same so we can get the same answer, divided by 3.1 times 10 to the exponent negative 4. So the answer you should get here is, uh, it's actually a very long one. I'm just going to round this here. Uh, or I can put the whole thing, it doesn't matter. 8.7096774419 times 10 to the negative 5 is what your answer should be. Now, um, how this will look on your calculator when you see scientific notation is it might look something like this. So you have your number, and then in tiny, tiny, tiny little font, It'll say times 10, and then it'll have negative 0, 5 up top. So this on your calculator screen means the same thing as this, right? The times 10 is little, but really it's the same thing. It's just obviously they're saving on space there. So it, this means exactly the same thing. Now, if you did not get this answer, the reason why I'm having you do this example specifically is because if this is not done correctly, you will not get this answer so meaning try it with if you want to see what I mean by that is try this exact same thing without the brackets you'll get a completely different answer from this you must make sure to remember the brackets okay I promise you it might work sometimes without the brackets but there will be times where it will give you the incorrect answer so my best advice to you is to always use the brackets that way, uh, you know that you're going to be getting the correct answer every time. Okay. Uh, so the next thing I want to do with you here, we'll put this together, is review of rounding rules. Okay, so I don't really have like a full lesson on this. We're just going to go over the rounding rules and then go through some examples. So just to make life easier, for everything that we're going to do here together, we're going to round to one decimal point. Okay. So sometimes you might be not be doing this when you're doing examples or you're doing calculations. But for now, we're going to do one decimal point. Okay. So let's say we had a 2.17. Okay. So remember the goal is we want to round to one decimal point. What you're going to do is you're going to look at the number directly to the right of the one we want to consider. So in this case, it's a number that is higher than 5. Anytime the value to the right is higher than 5, you are going to round this up. So this would become 2.2, right? So this is a pretty straightforward rule. Anytime the value beside it is higher than 5, you round up. Let's say we were to now look at something that had a number lower than five, right? So if we have a number lower than five, that means we are not going to round up. We would keep that value the same. So this is kind of like the rules that most people remember pretty easily. So higher than five, you round up. Lower than five, you keep the same. You do not round, right? Okay, so here's the rule that maybe not a lot of people know or maybe don't remember. Now, the rule is, well, what happens if it is a 5? Okay, so if it's a 5, so let's look at this. Okay, so remember one decimal point is what we want. So I have 2.1527. So if it's a 5, what you have to do is look to see what comes 
after the five. Because there are numbers here, anytime there are numbers that continue on, you are going to round up. And it does not matter what those numbers are. It just means that it's a five and there are additional numbers to the right of the five. So let's say we have um, uh, 8.251, okay? So here you would look to the right, it's a five. Because there is another number here, this would automatically round up to 8.3. So this has to be a number though. It has to be um, between one and nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It has to be an actual digit, an actual number. So when it's a five, you have to look to the right of the five. If there is a number there, you're going to round up. Okay, so now, what happens if there is no number there or if there is a zero that is there? Okay, so let's do 3.15. Uh, we'll do 2.2. .2. Actually, we'll do the same thing. 3. We'll do 3.25. Uh, 3.25, 0. Okay, so... Remember, we want one decimal point for all these. So you're gonna look next door, it's a five, okay? This five is not enough. You have to look next door to the five. If there is no number there, or if there is a zero, so no number is the same as there being a zero, right? What that means is this number that you are questioning gets rounded up if it is an odd number. So odd numbers, you round up. Even numbers stay the same. They do not round up. So in this case, 3.150, because there is nothing after the five, this one is an odd number. So the answer here would round up to 3.2. This next example, I have 3.25. So you look next door, it's a five. After the five, there is nothing there. Because this two is an even number, this will stay the same to 3.2, okay? Over here, you look to the right, it's a five. It's a zero beside the five. Remember, that's the same thing as if there is nothing. Because the two is an even number, it would stay the same. Okay, so let's recap that. So if it's a five and there is no number afterwards or a zero, the value that you are questioning, if it is odd, you round up. If it is even, it stays the same. Okay, but if you have numbers after the five, you round up as normal. Okay, so if it's a five with numbers afterwards, you round up. But if it's a five with nothing, it depends if you're dealing with an odd number or an even number, okay? I'm gonna give you some, the next page I'm gonna flip to here, I'm gonna give you some examples that I want you to practice doing. Uh, and keep in mind for all of the examples I'm gonna give you, we want one decimal place, all right? So let's take a look. Okay, so pause the video, and I want you to practice, write your answer in to one, remember we want to round these to one decimal place, okay? Pause the video, and then we'll check your answer when you come back. Okay, so let's take a look. So here, there are some that are straightforward here. So next door is a six, that is bigger than five, so that means this is automatically we are rounding up over here. Same thing, the eight is higher than five, so here we would round up. Now in this case, we look next door, it's a five with nothing, so we are going to have to round this up because it is an odd number. Here it's less than five, that's a straightforward one to keep the same. Here we have a five, and then next door is a five. Because there are extra numbers, we are going to round up 0.7.
And here we have a 5 with a 0, which means this will stay a 2 because it is even.